in, in this, this video, video <laughs> we're going to talk about why are the holidays stressful for couples everybody for couples for dogs for and animals dogs are not stressed out at all they get everything all, they want well not they all get dogs love and oil. our dog is spoiled really hi i'm charmaine i'm jomo and in this video, we'll be talking about why Christmas is stressful for couples. Okay, so jump why in. Why Christmas is stressful for couples. <laughs> I think, okay. I think it starts off, number one, with mm -hmm. uh, gift giving and expectations of gift giving. Right. And people trying to one-up each other. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they feel inadequate if their gift doesn't equal the same price as the other person's gift. You know, it's nothing, nothing worse than somebody giving you a gift you didn't expect. Yes. Now you receive the gift, but you feel some kind of way. So most people have a closet of gifts for the people who just, you know, I wasn't ready for that, but I got something for you. I have that. <laughs> oh, I know. And I put gifts underneath the tree for people that come over the house and give us a gift and we weren't expecting it. I just don't put a name on it and it'll be a really nice gift that was just sitting under the tree for somebody to come over. It's, I mean, because you, you, there's there's something about it. It's actually a marketing tool where they give, uh, even the marketers give you stuff for free, pens or it's, stamps. It's psychological. It's psychological where, where you feel indebted to them to do something because they gave mm -hmm. you something. So I think a lot of times Christmas can be stressful for couples as well because if you're dating someone and you really aren't that serious or you're not sure if it's going there, it's going to be like, this. this is not your life time partner oh you talking about then, this this is just like a holiday fling right or some people will break up with somebody right before the holiday if they know that this is not their boo this was just like something really casual they'll break up with them and then rekindle something after the holidays it happens people do that on purpose wow. like some guys do that i could maybe girls too i don't know but i know guys will break up with the, oh, they won't. the holidays so they don't have the pressure of Oh, can you come over to my parents' house and meet mom and dad? I don't dad? know about all that. Or, I don't know about all that. Or not having to feel uncomfortable with introducing them to That's their real. family and friends, and then their family and friends have the wrong impression, impression of what the oh, relationship is. Oh, you finally got a man. Is. And you're like, oh, y'all get married? Yeah. You know, like, no, this is not the one. This is just somebody I'm kicking it with. I so that. that can be stressful during the holidays or you reflecting on what you've done and what you've accomplished. And maybe you didn't accomplish goals. Maybe you didn't change some habits that you want to change. And now you're looking at your goals from 2022 or, you know, like this year. Yeah. And you're thinking, man, I haven't checked anything off the box. It could be depressing. It could be stressful because some people during this last month of the year are trying to knock off things that they could have been doing the entire year. Correct. Um, so those are a few things what are some other things that people could stress out about during the holiday season having family you don't want over your house oh my goodness and entertaining and cleaning the house and cooking and charmaine worried about people not, judging you know yeah, charmaine is uh we, we we we've had a tradition for a while yeah. i've having a big christmas dinner and this year we're actually uh, not we we're not going to have this big Christmas for the dinner first year, and so she it was, was kind of funny. I I actually want the people over, but I don't want to feel not even just feel the stress. It's not even about that. I don't want to cook. I don't want to clean. I don't want to. I don't want to do anything. I just want to relax. I want to watch movies with the kids. I wait. Listen, I don't, I don't care. I, I already told her. I said, listen, man. Whatever being brings you stress brings me stress. And I, I, brings I, I me stress. called my family, and they're everybody's cool with it. Yeah, well, I'm cool everybody's with it. Everybody's cool with it. Hi. I'm cool with it too because I really yeah. don't want to have. I don't. The, the, it's a lot of work entertaining, whether you want to entertain or not. Right. But you, there's, and you know, I know you have a really high standard, so your standard pushes. Well, you. I, I like to decorate the house and make sure everybody's comfortable, and I'll think about everybody and their needs. Be so I'm like. I want to. I want to be a great host. Yeah. And in the process of, it's a lot of work. Yeah, you told. I actually um, hurt myself during Thanksgiving, um, just doing too much and 
like all the cooking, all the cleaning, all the decorating and setting tables and pulling chairs and all that stuff. It was just a lot. And I literally sat down at Christmas and I told everybody I was not doing Thanksgiving at my house next year. So somebody else actually volunteered to host Thanksgiving and it was such a weight lifted. And if I would have never done that, I don't think I would have gotten the response that I, you know, like nobody would have volunteered to do it because it's so much easier to just go over somebody's house and just fix one dish, right? Than to host. It's a lot of work to like host. I think that's that's maturity though. Yeah. To get to a place where you can tell people what you, you know, because so many times we're so busy trying to please people mm -hmm. that we stretch ourselves past our bandwidth. And yes, you love family, but sometimes family will take you over the cliff mm -hmm. and it's more pressure and stress to perform when you don't have it in you. Right. And sometimes you have to pull back and do what's best for you. I think um, the holidays can be stressful too because people are comparing their life to other people's lives and what they can do during the holiday seasons and what oh, yeah. can't. So like the for example, right. And it could be something <clears throat> very like, I don't know, this is kind of sad for me, but some families don't have enough money to get a Christmas tree or lights and maybe their neighbors or everybody in the community, you know, has lights out and then they just can't afford to do it or they can't afford to have a Christmas tree like their kids' friends have. And, you know, there's really tight on money and it, it puts a lot of pressure on you because you're comparing what other people have. And just, you know, I think it's perspective because we have a lot to be grateful for. I was in a small group this past week on Monday and um, we were talking about different things that couples have challenges with. And one of the husbands said um, that we don't have problems. You know, like there's people that's starving on the street. There's people that don't have a home to go to. There's people that don't have food in a refrigerator to eat. Like we don't have problems. We have issues. We have issues. And All the thing is, is if you weren't so busy comparing yourself or, you know, setting unrealistic expectations of where your life should be, then you wouldn't even be thinking about that. And a lot of it has to do with how we live, social media platforms, and you just comparing. Totally, and comparison will always leave you disappointed. Right. Never compare yourself to uh, other people, compare yourself from where you came from. Right. And it's so, you know, because I do it too, and that you look at other people, other churches, other ministries, other mm -hmm. lives, other this, other that, and you can just get yourself discouraged because you right. see like they're further ahead, but you have to always ask yourself, okay, where was I and where am I? Where was I and where am I? And as long as you're forward or ahead of where you used to be, mm -hmm. rest in that, be thankful, be appreciative. Because you know, I was sitting outside the patio today and I, I saw you bought me a salad, la salad last night and I- It has onions in and it. And I picked every onion out, but that's you all right. Did. Yes, I did. And I ate my salad for lunch. No, it's minor. <laughs> And I was like so disappointed when I saw those onions. I didn't want to mention it to you the salad no, because it had onions. I was like, that's minor. Good. Onions, onions can be taken out. That's not a big deal. Yeah. So I sat on the patio and mm -hmm. I, I ate my salad and I was, I was thanking God for where I was. Mm. I, I was thanking God for the patio. I was thanking God for the pool. I thank God right. for trees because like, you know what? I'm so thankful for where I am. Right. And then it hit me, man. I've had a tremendous life, even though I know God, however long God has me here. Mm -hmm. I said, I don't think I've ever had a bad house. I mean, we've had our first house in our early 20s. Yeah. And we've always been in the house. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an apartment for a hot second. Right. But my point is, for most of our relationship, we've been in our own home. Mm -hmm. And Charmaine was saying, you know, Jomo, she was just telling me, like, Jomo, you've always had businesses and all your businesses have been successful. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, they have. But sometimes if you're not careful, you will minimize where you are looking at someone else's star, Absolutely. not realizing you in space too. Yes, so I'm that's saying? so good. So you, you have to really reflect and be mm -hmm. thankful and appreciative right. of where you are. And, you know, cause I looked at it and, you know, I wasn't trying to be braggadocious, but I was doing my calculation. And I think for most of my life, I've made over a hundred thousand dollars. Right. I don't know what I mean to say that. I mean, but for most of my life, mm -hmm. And of my adult life, I've never, I've made under, but when I look at the average of my life as, as a working adult, right? I've, I've averaged over a hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. That is abnormal. Yeah. That's so I said, man, thank you, Lord. 
Yes. Now I'm not where I, I'm not all the way there yet, but my trajectory is the where I want to be. Right. So one of the key aspects of being thankful mm -hmm. is to be grateful. That's good. Piggybacking off of what you're saying, I think too, couples should reflect on where they were and where they are now. Yeah. So uh -huh. if you look at where you were five years ago, two years ago, three months ago, and it's not where you want to be, that's okay. But if you've made improvements, write the improvements down so you can be thankful for where, where you've come from. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if you say, hey, we're in the same spot we were a year ago. Hey, make some expectations and some goals to set and then not only make the goals, but um, create a um, like a plan on how to get to the goals. Because a lot of times people will set goals, but then they don't set the plan in yeah. motion. Like, OK, how are we going to do it? What are we going to do different? What are we going to do different? How are we going to create new habits? So the thing is, is don't compare yourself to other people. Compare yourself to yourself. Like where, how have you grown personally? How have you grown as a couple personally? And be thankful for where you are because it could be worse. Uh -huh. It could always be worse. Mm -hmm. um, one last thing that we can talk about as far as stress um, during the holiday season for couples is a lot of couples, their sex life goes, it goes down uh, during the holiday season. And do you know why? Why? Because stress levels are up. Because it's cold outside, you don't want to take your clothes off. That's your neck. You better take your clothes off. You better take your clothes off. You better take your clothes off. No, but you know, if it's cold outside, your spouse is depressed about things going on in their bills life. You, you got bills you can't pay. Gifts you can't, you pay. Gifts, you can't buy. Um, it it puts a lot of stress and it makes you not want to be in the mood. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. You know? And it seems like I, I know, well, I know for, for women, they have a lot more things that go into their mood, mm -hmm. whereas men just are less. Right. Yeah. So all those things contribute to a lower sex, uh, so just check sexual yourself activity. And make sure that your sex drive isn't going down because of exterior issues. And she talked about it. Control. Absolutely. Talk about it. You know, I, I told my, I, I, before this video, I told, I said, girl, about uh, two days ago, this chick came over and she came over. <laughs> and I said, can she come back again? <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay. And remember, love, love laugh, laugh, and, and learn. learn. <laughs>